camp? What, what were you looking for? What uh, were kind of the points of emphasis? Uh, points of emphasis, I think, was just one, establishing um, a third receiver. I think first and foremost, getting these guys to finish every play in practice and to practice fast. You, uh, are you guys going to be more of the five, six, seven receiver kind of rotation or, or really kind of focus in on three or four guys? Or how, how do you expect that to go? Uh, right now, we're working on getting three, then we'll go to four, and then we'll go to five. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, Matt and Shane, obviously, you know, they play a lot of snaps here, play a lot of football. Um, you know, those two guys are pretty good players here. After that, you know, you got Thomas that's playing good ball, football. Um, I think Chaz Anderson, who's moved over from the defense, has been a good surprise for us. He's playing good football. Dallas and Troy obviously have played a lot of snaps here over the years. Um, DJ Dean is playing really good. So I think you got a good collective group of about six or seven guys that will be able to play good football. Is, is there something in particular you're looking for from that third receiver? I mean, is there something? Uh... Uh, just a guy to step up and make some plays. You know, I mean, that's just playing, you know, playing the game and playing that position. I think, you know, you know, doing your job is at the end of the day is making plays. When you envision your, your lineup out there, how much do you expect to have the front guys out there and then how much are you looking for for maybe receivers four, five, six, or whoever is going to be on the plane going to away games? Um, you know, obviously I think special teams are going to play a part in some of those guys getting on the plane. Um, after, like I said, Shane and Matt, you know, Thomas is a good player. That's, he's probably going to be on the plane too. Um, you got DJ Dean. You got, like I said, Chaz. I'm just looking for guys that are going to come and make plays, and everyone's going to play their role. I think in this offense, you guys known over the years, uh, the, that position, everybody has a piece in this offense. I know we're like five days in, but I mean, uh, do you think it's going to be harder than you thought, easier than you thought to define who that number three guy is going to be? I mean, it's I mean, it's a, like I always say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So I mean, we're only at practice five or practice six, I think it is. So we got we still got time, and we got some scrimmage situations coming up. Spurbeck was more of a slot guy behind Shane in the spring. Do you mm -hmm. have to move him outside to, to if he's your third best guy? You see, you need to I, maybe do that. I think or? the unique thing about this offense is no one's no one is a definite slot, or no one's just a definite you know outside receiver. Everyone can kind of play all three of the positions. Do you look for somebody who complements what Matt and Shane do, or do you just put the third best guy out there? We're gonna play the best three, or the best two, or the best four. <laughs> We've talked a lot about Shane being used more as a traditional receiver this year. How do you think his game suits that? And Matt was saying in media days he thinks that might help him too. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Shane has done a good job since spring um, and the summer just working on his game and just becoming a complete receiver. Um, obviously, it's going to help Matt. You know, you need another guy to be able to play next to Matt that can take some of the heat off Matt. So guys won't be able to roll coverages and be able to just double team Matt. Uh, how did the Chaz switch come about? Um, you know, we're looking for another guy. And, uh, you know, Chaz was interested in moving over to offense, and that's what we did. I know he played some wide receiver in, in high school. What, what is his background, and what kind of skills did he bring you know, already with him at that position? Yeah, Chaz, you know, when, when we talked about Chaz moving to the to wide out, I went back and watched his high school highlight tape, and 90% of it was him playing wide receiver. Um, his skill set wise, I think he's strong, I think he's powerful. He's got great ball skills, he's fast. And, uh, and he's probably one of our run after best, better one after catch guys. Uh, DJ Dean, you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. you know, he kind of snuck up in the spring and, and mm -hmm. started making some plays. What, what are you seeing out of him? DJ is a go hard blue collar dude, man. You know, he, I, he's one of those guys that kind of got to slow down. Hey, DJ, just slow down, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but no, he, he shows up every day. And one thing, I, I even said it to him last night one thing I know about you, you're going to go 100 miles per hour. And I'd rather have that problem than have to make a guy, you know, go faster. Troy Ware's a guy who has played some snaps here. Mm -hmm. How has he developed? And I think this is a senior year. I mean, is, yeah. is he a guy who is going to make the best of, of the senior year? Uh, well, you know, Troy. Troy's still a work in progress. I mean, he's he's had a quiet camp right now. He just got banged up yesterday. But I mean, he's you know he's doing what we're asking him to do. You know, he's catching the ball when the ball's going his way. Obviously, just like anybody else, there's room for improvement. How some of the older guys taught some of the younger guys kind of what's going on? Did you see some good leadership from the position? Yeah, you know, last night, you know, uh, I, I had gone on the phone with Matt, and I said he did a good job with at meetings. You know, Matt's becoming more vocal of a leader, um, you know, telling guys where to line up, what route to run. And I think that's very important because I think they, originally they were a very quiet group. You know, and in this offense, you got to be able to communicate, and guys got to be able to talk to each other. With a guy like Troy, I mean, it might be kind of a hard question to answer since he's only been around him for a couple of months now. What's it that's kind of held him back? We've been hearing about, you know, his, his ceiling and his talent for a long mm -hmm. time, but he just hasn't quite broken through yet, it seems. Um, I think just continue to keep playing. I think everyone, you know, more reps after reps after reps, guys continue to, to get better. You know, hopefully, he, you know, we can keep working on and hammering on the things that he needs to get better at, and hopefully he can, we can get him to make
make those plays you need to make. As a group, what, what do you like about what you have, and what are you maybe missing that, that you, you got to get out of these guys the next few weeks? What, what I love about these guys is, is that they show up to work every day. They're eager to learn. And, and when they do cross them, the lines, they go fast and they play hard. And, and I love that part about them. Where I think the next step is is to be more consistent. Um, I talked about one thing expectation-wise. The first thing I talked about in camp was start fast and finish strong. And, you know, there was times in the spring I thought we started fast but didn't finish strong. There's times that we did the opposite. So stringing together four, quarter foot, four quarters of football, I think, is going to be very important for these guys. The two main deep threats off last year's team are, are no longer here. Uh, you don't think of Matt or Shane as traditional downfield guys. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you are as far as a downfield threat? Um, first of all, Matt can get down the field. And one thing about Matt, he, he catches those moments. He, yesterday he made a play up the sideline, ball was thrown up, and uh, he went back up and high pointed at the highest point which we call 50-50 grabs. He's, he's pretty good at those. Shane has made some, some plays down the field in the scene. Um, Chaz has made some plays. DJ Dean made one today down the field. We'll be able to push the ball down the field with these guys. When it comes to Shane, I mean, he's obviously known as a guy that will make you miss. But talking with a lot of guys out in Mount West Media Days, they're saying that he's hard to take down because of his strength. Yeah, he's, his, he's, his lower, he's pretty strong. He's built like a running back, his lower half, you know, and he's elusive. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, getting back to Matt, you know, he, he Talked about him getting downfield last year. I mean, over 1,100 yards receiving. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be tough, but how, how can he still get get better? I know that that jump from junior to senior year to actually make you know an improvement in your game is tough. But I mean, how can he get better? Matt, I think Matt has, and Matt will tell you this himself. There's a lot of room for improvement in his game. Just little technical, um, you know, aspects of the position that he can get better at. As far as first man-to-man -man coverage, we're, we, him and I have been talking about certain releases we can use. And uh, cause he, one thing about Matt, he's strong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And when, it, when, the, you know, when it's an in-tight catch, he's able to throw guys off and be strong and make strong catches in tight. So.